I'm Ben Martinoga and I'm a neuroscientist. I've spent the best part of the last 15 years in the lab doing research to understand a bit more about how the brain grows, how it works and how it takes shape during our lifetime. So neuroscience is nothing more, nothing less than the scientific study of the brain. If you're a keen runner, it might seem obvious that running has a powerful effect on your state of mind. But as a neuroscientist, we approach that question a bit differently and we want to know whether there really is scientific evidence to support that idea. You know, the idea that it, it helps clear your mind and focus, makes you feel better, more positive, help you deal with stress, or even to have more creative ideas. So there's now some really quite good evidence that running has many quite potent effects on your state of mind. In fact, I like to think of running as a kind of moving mindfulness meditation. You're thinking about the bodily sensations, you know, the ache in the muscles. You're almost certainly focused on your breath. You're thinking about where your next foot's going to fall, your next turn on the route. You can almost think of it as a kind of flow state. So this, this kind of mindful state is a very beneficial state for the brain and for your state of mind. And in fact, a couple of studies recently came out of universities in Nottingham and, and Lithuania, showing that after a run, people were much better able to control their attention, avoid distractions and switch between tasks. And this isn't just a short-term immediate effect after a run. Another study out of the University of Arizona looked, actually did brain scans on a group of very serious runners and compared them to non-runners. And they found that there were, there were functional differences in the brain. And in particular, these parts of the brain, especially towards the front of the brain, which are involved in what neuroscientists call executive functions, which include this ability to, to focus and direct your attention, these were fired up and working in synchrony in a different way compared to non-runners. In fact, it turns out this idea of the runner's high seems to be real. I mean, after all, even mice running on a treadmill in a laboratory seem to get it. And we now know quite a lot about the, the chemical signals in the brain that seem to activate this, this state of, of happiness and even euphoria in some cases. And it seems to be a lot to do with the endorphins, which are a kind of homemade opiate, if you like, that's made inside the brain. And also the endocannabinoids, which are another signal which binds to the same receptors that cannabis does. And now this runner's high needn't always be some kind of drug-like high. It can also be a kind of quieter feeling of, of happiness and satisfaction. And perhaps that's why a run that can feel like absolute murder at the beginning by the time you get home, you're feeling somehow re-energized and satisfied. For example, there's one of these signals that has the ungainly name of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which seems to be a really strong medicine for the brain. So it can encourage the general health of nerve cells, or neurons as we call them. It can encourage new connections, what we call synapse to synapses, to form between brain cells. And it may even be able to activate the birth of new brain cells. And this is quite an exciting possibility because until about 20 years ago, scientists thought that when you're born, you've got all the neurons you're ever going to have. But that seems to be changing now. And there are certain activities and certain parts of the brain where new neurons seem to be able to, to grow and take root during your lifetime. And in particular, aerobic exercise, like running, seems to be a very good way to activate this birth of new brain cells. You may have heard runners come back from their run saying that they've had a great idea or suddenly things made sense. And this fits with what neuroscientists are learning about the creative process. And almost all of them stress this idea that incubation is really important. So rather than really pushing and worrying at a problem until you've got the answer, sometimes it pays off to zoom right out, disengage, and let your unconscious mind chew away at the problem. And it goes further than that, because the best thing to do to activate this sort of mind-wandering associative state is to do an activity or task that engages your brain, but doesn't overtax it. And it strikes me that running might be a perfect way to do this. By now, everyone's very familiar with the idea that getting fitter, going for a run, is very good for your body. But the evidence is now stacking up that taking your mind for a run can be very beneficial too. 
And what this really boils down to is this idea that the, the three pounds of grey jelly that we all carry around inside our skulls is just another part of your body. So it stands to reason that what you do with your body, with your muscles and your limbs, can have a great effect on the state of your brain and the state of mind. And so it reminds you that you can take control of your state of mind, your brain chemistry even. And getting your shoes on and going for a run seems to have a lot of benefits and very little downside from the perspective of the brain.